This is the lecture that covers inductance circuits. There are several situations to look at. With respect to these situations, each situation involves setting up and solving a differential equation. You need to know how to set up and solve the differential equations for the situations that we'll look at. I will divide up this lecture, however, into a series of parts. Any sort of problems associated with inductance circuits, however, would be nothing more than a plug and chug type of problem after you've derived the expressions. So then therefore, I'm not gonna do any lecture examples themselves because as I said, it involves nothing more than plug and chug. What's most important is setting up and solving the differential equations themselves. Okay, the first situation is what is called the LR circuit. I actually demonstrate this for you in today's folder. Go ahead and take a look at that demonstration now. Okay, now the LR circuit, basically magnetizing an electromagnet, magnetizing a solenoid, this is very similar to charging up a capacitor. In other words, the RC circuit, as we saw at the end of chapter 24. When I set up the differential equation for magnetizing a solenoid, ultimately you end up with the exact same differential equation as you do for charging up an RC circuit, or charging up a capacitor, rather, in an RC circuit. That's also the exact same differential equation as it was for air resistance back in chapter 5. Okay, here is the LR circuit. It's actually divided up into two parts. Okay, so I have here a battery which has a potential difference V. Okay, right here is a resistor of resistance R. Right here is an inductor, a solenoid-like cell of inductance L. Okay, you turn on the battery, the current begins to flow, a counter EMF builds up like so, or a counter EMF, I guess I should say, should say, opposes. So recall that that counter EMF opposes the direction of the changing magnetic flux. As the current increases in the circuit, you then have this counter EMF be generated, if you will, within the solenoid itself. It's almost as if there is another battery that is present here that's pushing against the current. Okay, now I'm just gonna go ahead and use loop rule here in order to set up the differential equation. We'll start here and then just go clockwise on the diagram. So go across the battery first and the potential difference is V, and then follow the conventional current as we fall across the resistor, or Ohm's law like so. And then we also have here another battery, if you will, in the opposite direction. Okay, now let's go ahead and replace the counter EMF epsilon with the following. So, okay, all the directions are taken care of here on the diagram. I don't have to stick in an additional negative sign there, okay? Okay, now the goal here is to derive an expression for the current as a function of time. So at this point, I'm gonna to start to separate the variables themselves. Let's go ahead and move this term here to the other side of the expression. Like so. Okay, let's go ahead and divide by the inductance L. And this term here, I'm going to write like this, like so. And now we'll take the time dt and move it up here to the left-hand side, take all of this stuff here and move it down to the denominator on the right-hand side. Exact same process in charging up the RC circuit and in the air resistance situation. Okay, so let's see it. I have time dt. And then the right-hand side of the expression is as follows. So, okay, on the left-hand side, we're integrating over time from zero to t. On the right-hand side, we're integrating over the current from its initial value of zero to eventually its steady state value i. That's, what the, that's essentially what we want to derive here, i as a function of time. All right, integrating on the left, we just get the time t. Now let's go ahead and do the integral on the right-hand side. I'm gonna go ahead and separate that out over here. <clears throat> Okay, just do a little bit of u substitution. That's the denominator of the expression. Okay, the variable is i, remember, differentiate. Like so. Okay, let's go ahead and replace the variable here. That gives us this. Okay, integrate, you get natural log. Let's go ahead and plug in our old variable. Now we integrate between zero and i. 
like so. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in I first, and then we'll subtract with the zero plugged in. Okay, recall the identity for natural log of one value minus natural log of another. So let's just go ahead and plug in like so. So take a look carefully when I plugged in zero here like so. Okay, let's go ahead actually and cancel out the inductance L. Like so. And then that right there is what goes over here on the right-hand side of my expression when solving for time t. All right, so let me go ahead and write that in. Okay, we canceled out the L. So, and now what we do is we solve for i as a function of time. Okay, let me do some racing. Okay, so move these guys over here to the other side. Like so. Okay, let's go ahead and get rid of the natural log. Like so. And now we solve for the current as a function of time. Okay, let me do some racing. Let's get rid of all of this stuff. Okay, so move this term here up to the numerator. Like so. And then once again, we're solving for the current i. So to do that, take these two terms here and switch them. I'll factor out a v and divide by r. So if you do the last couple of steps here, I'll just do it all at once. This then gives you following expression. Okay? Once again, the exact same series of steps here for the LR circuit as we saw earlier when charging up a capacitor for the RC circuit and also with the air resistance back in chapter 5. Okay, now you do have to be familiar with the graph of this expression here. If we graph out the current that flows as a function of time, so at times t is equal to zero, you have e to the zeroth power, which is one, one minus one is zero, and then therefore we start off with no current at times t is equal to zero. When t gets very large, however, you essentially have e to the minus infinity, so it's basically one minus zero here in the parentheses, and then therefore the current just obeys Ohm's law across the resistor, V over R. So we have an asymptote here on the graph like so, and the current then approaches that value, the steady state value, like so. So what is it that you saw in the demonstration? After all, I had the voltmeter's leads across the solenoid. Was I reading the voltage across the solenoid? Yes, but not the voltage as the counter EMF. Instead, what I was reading very simply was the voltage across the resistor. The voltage across the resistor is just equal to I multiplied by R. So then therefore, take this expression here and just multiply it by the resistance R, and you then end up with this. So here's the voltage across the resistor, across the solenoid. Like so. So it's essentially the exact same graph, it's just the voltage now is a function of time. So you saw the needle swing over initially very quickly on the voltmeter, and then it slowly approaches its steady state value, like so. Okay, what about the EMF itself? What about the counter EMF? Mathematically, how does that behave? Well, in order to calculate the counter EMF, we basically have to do the following. Okay, let's, let me rewrite this. Okay, the EMF as a function of time is the following expression. L times di dt. We've taken care of all the directions, once again, remember in the original diagram. All right, so then therefore, what I have to do is I have to differentiate this with respect to time and just multiply it by the inductance L. All right, so let me go ahead and quickly take the derivative of this thing with respect to time. Uh, let's see what I do. I get this. Okay, take a look at that 
carefully. Yeah, I did it a little bit quickly. Negative signs cancel out, resistance R cancels out. That then gives you this. Like so. And then multiply that by the inductance L here to get the EMF as a function of time. So the L's cancel. And then therefore add this. So notice how this behaves mathematically. So here's the EMF as a function of time. This is not what the voltmeter was reading in the demonstration. At times t is equal to zero, e to the zero if is one, and then therefore the counter EMF is equal to the voltage via the battery. But then as time goes on, as the magnetic field itself builds up, then the counter EMF then obeys the following relationship. It then undergoes an exponential decay. So when you reach the steady state current, the current itself is not changing with respect to time when you do. This then means that there is no counter EMF because there is no changing magnetic flux within the solenoid itself. We did work, of course, in doing all of this. Ultimately, this means that potential energy is stored in the magnetic field contained within the solenoid. Okay, one other detail associated with all of this here. And that's this exponent that you see popping up all over the place. minus r over l times t. Okay, the exponent itself cannot have any units. However, the time t is in terms of seconds. So then therefore we have another time constant that is present. The time constant is l over r, which has to be in terms of seconds. So r over l is in terms of inverse seconds, which then cancels with seconds, and you end up with no units here in the exponent. Okay, the time constant is referred to once again as tau. This is equal to L over R. It's equal to a Henry divided by an ohm. So how can a Henry over an ohm equal a time in seconds? Well, let's take a look at each. Okay, first of all, a Henry. How do we describe that? Well, we describe that in the following way. So, where the counter EMF here is in terms of volts, and then this is current over time, this is amperes per second. So, then therefore, a Henry, the units of inductance, is a volt divided by an ampere per second. That's equal to a Henry. So, that's going to go here in the numerator of the expression. Okay, and then we have an ohm here in the denominator. From Ohm's law, resistance in ohms is equal to voltage divided by current is voltage divided by amperes. So I have here a Henry, first of all, which is voltage over ampere over second. And then we divide here by an ohm, which is a volt per ampere, like so. Notice how the volts and all of the amperes cancel out, and you then are left with the following. One over one over seconds, which is then therefore seconds like so. So that's the time constant now shown to be in seconds. Okay, this is magnetizing a solenoid. This is analogous to charging up a capacitor. And then what we did back in chapter 24 is we discharged that charged up capacitor through a resistor. Do the same thing here. Discharge the magnetized solenoid through a resistor. Basically, in order to do so, we begin with a magnetic field already present inside the solenoid, and we remove the battery from the situation. Okay, so I said initially that the LR circuit was two situations. This is now the second situation. So this is like discharging, if you will, a solenoid. All right, so now I've got my solenoid like so, and I place it here in series like so with a resistor. Okay, so you flip a switch of some sort, so you remove the battery and now you discharge the solenoid. What then happens? Well, a counter EMF is generated like so to oppose the changing magnetic flux. 
as the current flows, there is a counter EMF that opposes that. Okay, and then let's just add everything up once again by using loop rule here. In this case, we have epsilon, and then minus IR is equal to zero. Okay, and then we have L times DI DT minus IR is equal to zero. But what could you say about the current as a function of time? In other words, is this a positive number or is it a negative number? It's a negative number because eventually the current is gonna go from some initial value down to zero. So this right here is a negative number for that reason. This then means that we have to tack in a negative sign like so. Missing this negative sign is really easy to do. So once again, this guy right here is negative. We take care of it here mathematically in the following way. All right, after that, finding the current here as a function of time is easy. So let's just do the remainder of the situation. Let's move this guy to the other side. Like so. Okay, divide by L. Let me write it like this. So, okay, now we go ahead and we separate the variables. We do so like this in this case. Okay, and now we integrate. So we integrate over time, like so here on the left, and then integrate over current from an initial value of I naught to a final value I as time goes on, and then we solve for this as a function of time. Okay, left-hand side of the expression. It's just this right hand side of the expression is this. Okay, and then let's get rid of the natural logarithm. Like so. And then cross multiply and solve for i. Once again, we have to be familiar with its graph. So the current that flows as a function of time just undergoes an exponential decay from its initial value of I naught, and then down to zero, like so. If we needed to calculate the counter EMF as a function of time, we would then once again do a di dt. However, you would have to make sure that you make the number negative, as we did here originally. Usually, however, that's probably not going to actually appear on the AP exam itself. Usually, they're just more or less concerned with finding the current here as a function of time. Okay? Over there. Okay, so that finishes up the LR circuit. I'm going to go ahead and stop this video here, and then the remaining videos will take a look at the last couple of situations.